Welcome to another Doctor's Post 5 Quick Tip video. My name is Jose de Aguirre and today I'm going to show you how to convert a regular input property control into range sliders. So this is what I mean by that. You can see here these range sliders that I can move and you can see the instant feedback as soon as I move them, I change the value, then everything else in my analysis will update. Um, let's go to a simpler example. Here is my text area and then if I go to the HTML I can see that it's very simple. I just have one placeholder that will hold my input controls. In this case, I have one input control and one label. Uh, if I remove the, the JavaScript, then my range ladder will turn into an input control and it's an input field and it's just a regular document property control. It only works with input field property controls. Let me add back the JavaScript and now all I have to do is put the script and it will convert into range slider. Now you will notice that I don't have instant feedback here. And the reason is because maybe my analysis has a lot of computations that I don't want every time I move the range sliders for the instant feedback. I just want to perform the, those calculations when I release the, the mouse from the range slider. And for that, for, in order to do that, I just do a very small change in my script. I go to my script and let me explain you how it works simply is just taking the input values, <clears throat> the input fields from my slider and now um, it's taking the slider from here and it's looking at this input. So this is rendered as an input and then all I'm doing is changing some of the properties from that input. In this case, the type is going to be a range. I can convert that into a color picker or something else. Uh, but in this case, with the range slider, I'm just setting those, those uh, properties uh, as minimum, maximum, step, and these are standard HTML5 properties that you can use. So in this in this case, I'm using the on change event. That means when I release the button from the slider, it's going to make those changes. But if I use the on input event, and I click OK, let me uh, close this, close all of this, then I will have the instant instant feedback. So I'm not releasing the mouse, I'm just keep dragging it and you can see the computation is being active every time. So that's a key difference that you want to consider in case your analysis has a lot of information to deal with. This script is available in the community. It's called the JavaScript slider for Spotfire. It explains more into, into details how it works. Um, here I have two of the same document properties, but one is converted with the script as a range slider. And you can see that if you change it changes in one place, it's going to update the range slider automatically and vice versa. There is the code, there's the explanation, and if you want to have multiple range sliders, then all you have to do is put them into an array. You will notice here that I don't have a label here because the label is added programmatically in the script in these range sliders. So I don't have that label, it's added programmatically, and the script for that is right here. Here's where I can I create the the span element to display as a slider value, and then I set for each of those elements that I found with my query selector all, I just convert them into a range. And all of them will have the minimum, maximum, the same value. But if I have some other variation, then I can use script parameters that I'm not going to cover in this video, but you can make those changes as you will uh, according to your needs. Um, and that's it. Uh, I hope you like it and see you in the next Dr. Spotfire quick tip video.